Welcome to the Morally End. My name is Mark Machado. I'm joined by my cousin across the pond, the professor of cricketology, the professor of cricketology, Dominic Machado. We are going to be reviewing Sri Lanka's T20 series win against the West Indies. Um, at, it kind of ended up being quite a quite a convincing win, um, but there is some nuances that I think we need to discuss about the about the whole series. Um, before we do that, a little bit of housekeeping. If you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button, hit that follow. We need all the help we can get with this channel. Guys, remember to leave your comments, leave your likes, whatever whatever you not got to say. If you want to criticise me, you want to criticise Dom, that's absolutely fine. Obviously, as I always have to say, there is no room for misogyny off this channel. If you want to be a misogynist, leave. Take your misogyny somewhere else. Um, we also got to remind you that we have a WhatsApp channel, which, I reg- uh, which we update regularly. I didn't update it today. That's my bad. I will do for the ODIs. And we've also got a sub stack as well where we have some great writing about the Shrunker team. Um, on that, please subscribe to both of those things. And as I say, tell all your friends and family about us. We are here. We are out. We're proud about the content we make. We want you guys to uh, to get involved and, and grow it as much as we can. Um, also got to remind you, if you need a mortgage, Mike Ward Mortgages is there for you. He operates, he can sort you out if you want a mortgage in the UK, in the UAE, and Saudi Arabia as well. I will just chuck in, <clears throat> if you want to sponsor the early end, if you have a business and you want to get involved, drop me a line. We're happy to work with anyone. We don't care. Um, <laughs> Uh, Dom, we need to get into this series, but before we do that, I think we need a minute's reflection on two, two kind of, I'm going to say, semi-tragic cricket events today. Ah. The India team got all out for 46. Obviously, our our kind of brothers slash sisters are across, I I don't know what that bit of water is called. The Paul Strait. The Paul Strait. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and and also oh, the, and on on top of that, the Australian women's team, which I know some members of the Morley End have quite a soft spot for, um, have not been knocked out of the World Cup in in the UAE by by South Africa. I don't know whether we need a minute's round of applause for New Zealand and and South Africa, or if we need a minute's kind of silence for um, and kind of prayers and reflection for. India and, and Australia, but I just thought it might be a nice way as, as Sri Lanka fans that we kind of commemorate. S- commemorate. Yeah, you know, yeah. Mark, I, I, I was thinking a little bit about it. I think you put the mockers on uh, Australia in the last podcast. You were talking about how professional they are, how good they are. Uh, I mean, I wasn't watching your hands, but you might have had your fingers crossed behind your back doing all sorts of uh, curses against the Australian team. Um, I'll just say the India um, collapse, I think, is an interesting thing from the point of view of the London game that we will not name. Um, Because India, this is the the series that India plays before their five-test Border Gavaskar series, which will do quite a bit to kind of determine what's going to happen. And I think what we kind of want is for there to be a lot of confusion or one team to very clearly go to the top of the the table and the other team to lose. But I don't think it doesn't seem likely to me that India is going to go five Oh in Australia against Australia. So the more confusion there is the better. Cause we also need to beat Australia as well. So there there's, there's a lot, lot going on. So I'm not quite sure whether I feel like this is a good thing or a bad thing, but I'm sure India will come back strong in that third innings. I, I have no doubt. Yeah. I, I kind of agree with that as well. I mean, we were talking to WhatsApp group. I, I basically, I've really struggled with the maths around that WTC table yeah. right? because it's quite confusion, especially because some teams have lost points for various different, they've got point penalties, which makes the whole trying to figure out how many points or what percentages people can end up on even more difficult for, yeah. for a simpleton like me. So I kind of was a bit like, the kind of question I threw into the group was, what is a good result? Because in my mind, what I was kind of expecting is India to win these this series 100% all the way through with New Zealand. And then it be a kind of sh- a shootout 
if Sri Lanka are still kind of in the running yeah. by the time Australia come over to Sri Lanka in, was it February or Mar- Is it January, February they're coming? Like, yeah, uh, February, I think. Yeah. yeah. So because of that, I, I, this, I wasn't expecting India to kind of chuck a spanner into, to, yeah. into our works, as it were, because we do need results to kind of, in a way, go our way, right? Not kind yeah. of, they need to go our way for us to, if we're going to make it yeah. back to Lords next year. And, but then on top of all that, I mean, the reason anyone watches sport isn't because you want to see the same teams winning every week. It's because you want to see right. crazy stuff happening. And this is yeah. that crazy stuff. Um, yeah. Will O'Rourke, who we saw, who we saw up front and personal, right. Had a great, great performance and, and he's, he's a world-class bowler. Yeah. To the, I was, I'm obviously in the group with the Kumale Corner guys, who who are the people who run our kind of brother, oh. for the, which is all about Indian cricket. And I said, I was like, actually, the first time round when, um, and that first test that goal when Sri Lanka first got a look at Bularuk, we did struggle a little bit, but yeah. by, the, by the time we'd had our second go at batting at him, we were a little bit better. And by the second test, we're totally. I felt like we were kind of yeah. Our balance had the upper hand over him. So I wonder if we might see the same trajectory with the Indians. Obviously, yeah. the pitches and stuff are, are, are totally different to goal, right? There's a lot no- more movement. A lot yeah. more movement. I, I like watching it. Um, yeah, a lot more movement in that pitch. A lot more for the seamers there. So, yeah. Unsurprising that, that someone like Willow O'Rourke would do well. Yeah, absolutely. Anyway, we'll keep an eye on what, you know, we obviously keep an eye on what else is happening in the world of cricket. And also, if you think I'm kind of, you know, I, I have I should say this because sometimes I feel maybe people might misinterpret what I say. Firstly, I am half Indian, and secondly, I am married to an Australian lady as well. And on top of all that, <laughs> me and Dominic actually have quite a lot of relatives in Melbourne as well. So, um, you know, I, I hold no my bigoted views are just towards cricket teams, not to the people of these wonderful places. Uh, anyway. <laughs> Shall we get into um, into Sri Lanka's series win against West Indies? Firstly, the thing that shocked me above all else is how infrequently we appear to beat the West Indies. In, in yeah, series. this is the first bilateral win ever against the West Indies. I mean, strangely, we don't play them very much. Yeah, you know, it's it, it's one of those things. Like, it feels like there's sort of a a natural connect, uh, connection between the He's- two sides, but. Like and you know you have some players who are, um, who have shared lineage between the two islands or the two sets of islands, um, so it's kind of surprising we don't play them that much. And I think it makes for good cricket. I think um, both sides play with a flair. They both have their own brand of uh, cricket. They literally beat uh, play to the beat of their own drums. You know, I, I thought I thought it was really interesting you said that right because I believe the same obviously me and you are related so in, to some degree we come from a kind of you are the, the way we're taught about the culture of cricket is is quite similar but i wonder if actually that is a very sri lankan attitude and actually if you're a cricket fan from jamaica from barbados from antigua whether you consider there to be any sort of connection between the west indies and, and sri lanka and actually it's just more a reflection of the respect that a lot of older Shrunker fans, you know, I definitely got that attitude from my from from my father and and yeah. his and his and your dad, and, you know, um, and and their peers. And if that's something that just kind of passed down to us, and actually, whether you know whether there is that 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 bond that I think Shrunkers mm. kind of assume. I know, I know that you know there is plenty of connections between the two cricketing cultures, as you say, you know. Yeah. Gary Sobers was one of our early coaches, and um, I think he was our first coach actually. When once yeah. we got our status, right? Um, and you, you know, people are referencing West Indian cricket all over the place in Sri Lanka, right? But I just wonder yeah. if it goes the other way. Um, yeah. So, just this is an interesting point. Uh, like, I guess the other um, thing is in in the United States, um, apart from meeting Indian Americans, right, who obviously love their cricket and watch their cricket. When I meet West Indian Americans, there's this connection. Oh, you're Sri Lankan. Like, oh, we play cricket. We understand We understand um, that part of it. So maybe it's a specific American diasporic thing. But the couple other things that I'll, I'll kind of point to is 
that um, West Indies has always kind of put respect on Sri Lanka's name. You know, whenever they were on tours, they would do a stopover tour in Sri Lanka. Um, Viv Richards said that Roy Dias was one of the five best batters in the world. Um, and I think there's kind of a solidarity in that oftentimes, even though we play good cricket, we're overlooked. Someone like Ian Bishop, right, in terms of um, – commentators who actually know and follow Sri Lankan cl- cricket closely. Ian Bishop ranks up there with everyone, right? He follows the women's team. He follows the men te- men's team. So I think there is some interest taken in it. Um, and there's kind of a jovial attitude towards these series. There's not much like animosity yeah. in the sense of, you know, they play hard, obviously, but it's not like playing Bangladesh or um, something like that. We really should have like woken up Nick and got him on this show because obviously he's like half Jamaican and, and yeah. spent a lot of time in Sri Lanka because the conversation like I spent a little bit I've I've been to Jamaica on holiday I'm not going to pretend to be any sort of expert um, on kind of Jamaican culture but one of the things I did think when I was there was I was like it's actually really similar the 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 attitude of the people as well as actually the the kind of general look of the mm. island is quite similar to to Sri Lanka right. Um, and I've, I've, you know, I've, I've chatted to Nick about this and he said, yeah, like there is definitely some similarities that I don't know if you've been to, to either Jamaica or any of the other islands. And if you thought maybe the, the kind of laid backness is, I, I think there is definitely something about being from an island, Hmm. um, that, that impacts your kind of attitude to, to life and the way you approach things, um, but yeah, I just want yeah, I just want want to know. And our sprinting success, you know, Jamaican sprinting success, Sri yes. Lankan sprinting success. Yeah, one and the same, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and our music is, you know, reggae from Jamaica is universally accepted as a great genre of music. Baila, one of the most loved genres <laughs> of music. Um, they've got the whalers, we've got the gypsies, like um, <laughs> quite similar. Anyway, should we get more into the into that? Yeah, let's talk about it, yeah, because I'm conscious we are like 10 minutes in and we haven't we've barely mentioned it. So, the first uh match, Sri Lanka actually kind of end up getting hammered. Um, yeah, and you, we, I was a bit like, all oh, right, what is that? This whole Santa ball, what is it really? Is it just bringing? Is it just jobs for for his mates? Um, it, it, what is the real plan here? Barnaker's come back into the team, and I think that's kind of to if if I was going to be honest, I'd say it's kind of left a bit of an imbalance because there's way too many left-handers right in the yeah. middle there, and now also it kind of feels like actually that first innings kind of felt like it had just wasn't really going anywhere. No one could really grab it by the scruff of the neck. But then yeah. actually, as the series goes on, we kind of grow into it. And, and you know, the third match, the the, the decider, Sri Lanka actually play excellent in it. Yeah. You know, I think there's a couple of... Uh, let's start with the positives, right? Yeah. So today, today's match, I thought um, what Kusal and Potham did in the power play was huge. Um, they kind of decided, and Charith alluded to this on their own, hey, we're going to go after the bowlers. We're going to take a bite out of this chase in the early overs when there's no one, when there's two guys out, right? We're going to attack the spinners. We're going to attack the pacers. And they got, what, 67? They were 67 for one. And by then, the chase was basically just academic, right? It was very, very simple to do. And I think that mentality from Potham and from Kusal uh, was tremendously healthy. That was the best thing I saw because that's the way that um, T20 cricket is moving now, right? Those big, fast opening partnerships and you just keep up the pace as much as you can, right? And I think it's good that we've loaded our lineup with batters who can score runs, right? And who can score quickly. But I think it's dependent. We 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 can't really have the openers just kind of tick along in that case. you got to score, score quickly. And then if you're not scoring quickly, take your chances, get out, let someone else come in. Um, so seeing that method was really good because, um, again, it's if we believe Charith and it came from Kusal and Potham, that means they're reading the game well, that they understand this is how we should go about and approach it, right? Um, them batting 10 overs and going 60 for naught 
and then having to get 100 in the last 10 would have just made it very, very, uh, very, very difficult. So I thought that was impressive. Um, another really impressive thing here for me was um, Mahesh Thikshana. He looked a million bucks leading wicket t- taker in the series. And I really like the fact that um, they used him in the power play overs because that's where he's a wicket taking option. Um, it's kind of, he kind of, unfortunately, because he can do everything, right? He can bowl early, he can go bowl in the middle, he can bowl at the death. He kind of gets chucked around, but seeing him used as a power play weapon as he was in the CPL was really kind of, um, fantastic and he paid back sort of all the the faith that the selectors had put in him um and it was also good to see Dunith Wallalage bowling early on because i think we talked about this as well in that first t20 they had a lot of trouble breaking through early and they were bowling with Asit, with asitha um Thikshana bowled some but bringing in Wallalage as kind of oh sorry they also had chimindu bowling in that part but bringing in Malalage early also put pressure on the other side and helped to create wickets. So I love that combo of Thushara, Dikshana, Malalage kind of taking up those first six overs and having wicket-taking options throughout. And then you can thank Patirana for the end. You have Hasaranga who does his thing in the middle overs. We'll get to him eventually. But I thought those were kind of um, some things I thought they did well, attacking that first batting power play uh, when Sri Lanka is batting and when they're bowling is a really key part of the game. Um, let's talk about the bowling for a minute because there was something that, if you look at the scorecard, yep. looks to me quite glaring, and that is that our two slingers did not but get bowled out. And and Thikshana did not get bowled out. Yeah. So he was, gr- he was brilliant. He was our best bowler. Yeah. I think this is a bit of an issue, right? Because yep. I don't think so. We at, today, I'm just going looking at it. We've got five. No, sorry, one, two, five, five spinners to um, two, seamers. Yeah. two seamers, right? Our two seamers are effectively, but basically, mystery seam. Right, yeah, in terms of their players that no one like you're not going to face that anywhere else in the world. Okay, we know one of them, Pasarana, is basically the second best scene bowler in this form of the game after Bumrah, right? In so, the stuff that he bowls, right? In the later part of the yeah, inning, yeah, I, 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 in the death, right? Yeah. Uh, Tushara is actually probably not that far behind, right? Um, and then you've got two out and out gun spinners on their day, Tichna and Hasaranga. Right. Yep. You've got then and then you've got Walalage, who's who's I think he's probably a batting all rounder at this point. That's- really? I think he's a bowling all rounder. I, I I I think he is not that far behind Hasaranga. Uh, Hasaranga and Tichna. I think he's very, very good. I think he has his his bowling has come a long, long way. Um you know, he took he's taken two five furs against India, yeah. right? Um, he bowls well. He bowls with pace. He varies his flight. But but to your point, Mark, then you have five overs from Charith Asalanka and Kamindu Mendes. Yeah. And how many overs? Four overs from uh, Tushara and Patirana. Yeah. So, so, so I think so. So I think you could basically make a justification for Wallalage boning, right? Yeah, of um, course. Yeah. I think I think Kaminda and Charith do not need to have five overs. Absolutely not. Between the two of them, I think there is the kind of counter argument to that is they've both been kind of effective in this series. Yeah. I kind of wonder though when we aren't playing at home and people will be screaming at their YouTube channel, if you are watching on YouTube, subscribe, or or into their headphones, if you're listening on your podcast app, hit that uh, follow button, um, we'll be screaming, but the next World Cup's at home, which I know is right, but also, I, I think only our group game is going to be at home, right? So yeah. We need and to, I think we need to look beyond that. that. Right? It's, it's the ICC 
is the one who's responsible for the pitches at the end of the day, yeah. right? Um, whether the extent to which they might be home cooked or not, I don't know. But they're certainly not going to prepare all the wickets in Sri Lanka to be a par of 120 because that's the last thing yeah. that the ICC wants, right? And, okay, so just, just to kind of look at it, right, um, they the decisions they made towards the back end of the innings, right, kind of show this as a problem, right? So you get – you have um, – so, Asalanka at the end of the at the end of the twelfth over, Asalanka is just bold. West Indies is sixty eight for five, right? You've got five five wickets left, right? You allow them in the those last eight overs, right, to take ninety what ninety four runs, yeah. And so the thirteenth over is bold by Kamindu. The fourteenth over is bold by Asalanka. Okay, and so I'm thinking, all right, um, the next the next over has got to be, you probably got to bring in Thikshana or Hasaranga, but it's Will Allage, and that's where Will Allage gets kind of talked around by Gudakesh Moti um, yeah. for 25 runs. Okay, so then you get to the 16th over, and I'm thinking, all right, you bring in Patirana, you let him bowl the 16th, 18th, and 20th, right, and you say give him three overs. But it's Hasaranga who comes back in. And I just don't and then and then, you know, they left Dikshana with an over, which again doesn't make any sense. Um he's really good at the death. We've seen that. Um so I was kind of surprised they went with Thushara there. So I think obviously you know, on these pitches, you have a little bit of wiggle room with someone like Kamindu yeah. and, and Charath. But against another team, this could have been curtains for them. That those last over, those last eight overs, could have spelled all sorts of problems, right? So I think, yeah, you get one, two overs out of your part timers, and then especially if you still have three overs, no, four overs left of your main spinners, they need to go immediately so that you can just get those guys out. Right. Um, and then you bring in your death bowlers to kind of finish the job. And this is. Can, can, something that, yeah, 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 go for it. I just love to know what people watching and listening are thinking about this. Leave, leave us. Yes. Comments and thoughts about this. Because I, 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 I think there's two schools of thought with this, which is kind of the school which me and Dom are coming from, which is kind of like our best bowlers need to bowl out, but be bowled out and actually. Yeah we have four really good bowlers. So that should be kind of 16 overs that you know where, where they're coming from. Every time. Every time. And then maybe, uh, let's say 15 overs where you know where they're coming from and five yep. that are, are kind of interchangeable. Um, which I, 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 I don't know. Maybe actually that's the way it was spread, right? There was because Kamindu and, and Chara. Oh, no, no. It was a bit more than that. Um, and... Or it's what they did today, which is who do you feel is the right person to bowl at that time? Do they need another over of spin? Should we try another another yeah. over? I I personally think when you know, and maybe you can say it makes it easier for the opposition to plan. But if you know, like, yeah, is bowling like he, we are going to open with him, and and Teeks, and then Patarana is going to bowl probably three of his last four in the last five over the last yeah. five overs then you kind of can kind of mix around your other your yeah. other spinners through there you know you know hasaranga is going to come on over seven like it, yeah it, well that that's the other thing right like they they had hasaranga was bold he bowled really well today his first two overs he got a wicket yeah. um went for five runs and then they held him back to the death of all of our spinners he's the one that i least want to be bowling at the death because he floats it up right and he kind of you said this mark he kind of tries to buy his wickets sometimes yeah, yeah. right and against a team like west indies like that can backfire you we saw what happened in the second t20 even when we were totally on top of them they clobbered hasaranga towards the death so i think he needs to bowl seven nine eleven thirteen boom right that's where he's the where he's a difference maker um because you do have the options to bowl at the death you have Dikshana, if you want it, you have Patirana, who can bowl most of those overs. So I think 
Taurus kind of has to go back and look at his game plan for how do I envision, right? Because I think if it's a 50 over game, you can play around a lot more. Yeah. In a 20 over game, that could be the point of loss there, right? Like one big over could be the difference between a win and a loss. So yeah, I mean, I like think, today, what, one big over today kind of basically yeah. took the game from being a, you got to get six and a half runs and over to win this, yeah. to this is an eight run and over. Like yeah. the run rates, it pushed the run rate up by kind of one yeah. and a half runs, right? Yeah. Um, and actually, I thought it was interesting that Teachner brought that up in his in his interview at yeah. the news break, right? Because it, I, I think it, it was quite interesting to hear him say it because it, it shows yeah. what they're thinking about on the pitch. I often think those those kind of mid uh, mid innings breaks interviews kind of a lot of time end up being pointless. Maybe mainly because I've probably spent most of, most of the ones I've seen have been Joe Root kind of bumbling on about nonsense or, or <laughs> trying not trying his best not to say anything, not bumbling on a. a in the bat nonsense, that's a bit unfair. But I think, you know, most teams want to hold their cards as close to the chest as possible. Yeah. And Dijon and I actually spoke quite openly. I also think it's interesting that since Asalanka's got the captaincy, we've seen him bubble a lot more. Um, because often with a, with a captaincy, it can go one of two ways. But he obviously backs himself as a bowler. And, I mean, the stats kind of prove out that he's, you know, he... he he can get wickets at this level. Though yeah. I wonder, I do wonder once people have had a bit of a look at him, whether he'll still be able to to pick up wickets. And then I, I think Kaminda should be used it as the we're in a, we need something here. He's the kind yeah. of can you here's the one the, over. You give him one over, one over, right? Can you break the deadlock? The yeah. problem is though, when he walks away after both three overs and his economy rate is seven and he gets a wicket, then you kind of but is that better than Hasaranga would have done, or Thikshana would have done in those? Right, you know what I mean. Yeah, like yeah. that's that's the that's the issue is that the re- who you're replacing are those guys or Patirona's death overs, right? Yeah, um, yeah. If you get him in in that fifteenth over, maybe they don't go for twenty five, yeah. right? Um, I also think there's a balance issue too, right? Because you are either going to have to make Wella and Chimindu interchangeable. Well, depending on the pitch, or you need to drop one of the batters, right? Because you can't go into a pace-friendly pitch and only have Thushara and Patirana because if you only have those two guys, Patirana, we don't want him bowling up front, right? And you don't want to waste that death quality. And you want to give Thushara the overs up front because he can get the swing. So you're going to basically so unless you want to and and maybe we should talk about this what did you make mark of the decision to drop to drop chamindu after one match personally i thought it was short sighted right i think if you so uh, we've talked a lot of, on on Murley and in general about why certain players get pulled into squads like what is the reason for yeah. it i think chamindu kind of comes in what against uh india doesn't yeah. do anything wrong Turns up that first game doesn't again doesn't really do anything wrong. The pitch is not really a pitch for him, yeah. At all, it's not giving him any help at all, um, and ends up getting dropped the next match. The, the problem I've got is is again it's a balance thing, right? We've talked for yeah. years now that Sri Lanka are in desperate need of a seeming all rounder, really good seeming all rounder. We are not going to create. A, we are not going to pull someone out of the ground who's a fully formed international gun seeming all rounder. That yep. happens once in in kind of sixty years, and it happened to Shrunker when Angelo turned up. And we're gonna, you know, we're not going to find another Angelo. Tremendo is could get to the to Angelo levels at some point potentially if he works hard in this game and keeps working on this game. Yep. He's given the opportunities, but dr- bringing him in and then dropping him. Is not going to be something. Is not going to be the right way to get that out of him, right? Um, yeah, we know we cannot win a major tournament without a seeming all rounder in this side. And Absolutely currently, not. we have won a series just now against the West Indies, and with the two games that we won, we did not have that in the team. And I think it's it's we know at some point there's going to be a series where he's going to need to come back in, and at yep. that point we're all going to go, oh, but he's only played three matches, and the last one he just. The last time he was in the team, he just got dropped. He got dropped, kind of in a, in a way that you can you can explain. 
but also just look short sighted. Yeah, and and this is the other thing. In at this point in his career, right? What we've seen that's been really exciting is his power hitting. Yeah. Right? He had a great series against South Africa A. Um, he was great in the LPL. So keep him in there as a batter. And when you put him in there as a batter, don't bring him in at eight, right? Because what he he's not going to get a chance to develop his skills, right? And you have six consecutive left handers from three to eight. Why don't you bump him up? A couple spots. Put him yeah. in at five or six, right? Um, let him bat in a position where he's comfortable and he can gain his confidence. But that's that's the troublesome thing. Um, what do we gain by having both KJP and Bonica in this squad as opposed to having both Chamindu and Will Olige? Because well, well, we know... Yeah, the, go ahead. The problem is it comes back to that thing, right? Where it's like, why are you bring these older players into the squad if you're not going to play them, right? To me, it's really bizarre that Chandy's in this squad and we don't even talk about whether or not he should play, right? And I know... No chance, it, right? Un, un, unless uh, um, Kissel Mendes gets injured, I don't think he's coming in because he's basically in there to be a reserve keeper. Again, I, I, I kind of think, is that short-sighted as well? I'm not sure. Right. Um I, I kind of get the impression that the kind of a big part of of the philosophy around the the team is that we're going to bring these senior players in and they're kind of going to show the youngsters how to be professionals and what they need to be how they need to behave what they need to do in training what the you know how to conduct themselves how to handle the media what to do in interviews what to do with your downtime where to sit when you're on the tube carriage to get the best selfie um like that's kind of the role that these senior players have in the team but i just think that the team just looks imbalanced there's like no, yeah. there's there's no way to to look at it right because you kind and- of think you got barnica so low down yeah, no. or, or, or like, so Will Arlegay's Will Arlegay and Hasaranga are actually better examples than Barnica because they're kind of so low down in the order. Right, you're just like right. Well is only ever going to get to bat with possibly Barnu or Hasaranga unless something yeah quite quite right. weird and dramatic happens, and then the tail. Like, yeah. so he's 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 never he's he's going to be in that in that. That Sharnaka position again, where he ends yeah. up only ever batting with a tail, or he ends up in a situation where he's going to try and hit like eighteen off the off five balls, yeah. right? And and this is the thing, right? Someone like Hasaranga should be used as a floater, especially in a left hand heavy lineup, yeah. Right? Um, when you've got six left handers in a row, you got to break it up, and he is a capable batter. We've seen how good he can be on his day. Um, and that's a role that you can kind of clearly give him, but they don't seem to be quite up to that, up to par yet with that. And so then you have, you know, it, it's surprising that you're having both KJP and Bonica, no seam all rounder or in that lineup. The other thing that I was going to say that um, I'm curious about, and we've kind of alluded to who is setting the plans and, how is this working, right? Because we've heard a couple things. So one, we heard Dikshana kind of question giving Will Allegay that over, right? Um, that kind of changed the momentum, right? And being asked why he didn't bowl out. Then we have Kusal and Potham telling Charath, hey, we're going to go open and we're going to blaze our way through this innings, Right. So what that tells me is that in this, you know, we might call it son of ball, but there is no kind of core identity behind it. There's See, I don't think that's that bad an issue, right? Because I kind of think as a team and as, yeah. actually as international cricket players, because I, I, it kind of goes back to ultimately cricket is a individual sport masquerade and it's a team sport, right? Right. You've kind of got to work out if you're a cricketer, how to play cricket at this level, right? I think in, in this side, actually, when you look at it, there's a lot of players who kind of worked it out, right? So Patham's worked it out. Kusil Mendes has worked it out. Yeah. Kusil Pereira has had moments in his career when he's worked it out. He's also had moments in his career where he's really kind of struggled. Kamindu Mendes, Mendes has worked it out. Aslanka's worked it out. 
I'd say Bardica actually in the grand weight of things and the talent that he brings probably again hasn't quite worked out yeah. where his role is. I don't, I'm not blaming him for it. I think there's a number of reasons for that to happening, not least inconsistently. Hasarang has definitely worked out how to bowl at this level. I'm not sure he's worked out how to bat at this level consistently. I think Weller has shown signs that he yep. can work this out. out. Teaching our Paterana and Neil and Tushara have definitely worked it out, right? Yep. So you like, there's kind of three or four area players that haven't quite done it. And then on top of all that, once it all kind of comes together, I think what you kind of, if you, if you listen to the way Kadavo and Morgan speaks about how he created that, that incredible England side yeah. the, and, and the kind of role clarity they have in it, I think part of it is you've got to be able to have enough confidence to be able to feel that you can go and kind of express yourself in the way that you can. I think, Part of the reason why Kamindu's had a, such an incredible year for Sri Lanka is it's because quite often he ends up in different formats, not necessarily in T20. He ends up coming in to get – is at the crease when it's just chaos. It's been a chaotic yeah. two or three overs before him. And he, at that point, can kind of just kind of drop drop anchor, sit there for, for a couple of overs before he starts scoring runs in, in his kind of quite characteristic, yeah. classy manner. And actually, that shows a kind of level of maturity that a lot of our middle order players just do not seem oh, to have. Yeah. Where it's like, right, the minute, as I as I've started to say recently, regretfully, and you know, in 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 cricket, one becomes two. In Sri Lankan cricket, one becomes three, and sometimes even four. <laughs> yeah, um, and it's like, how how do you stop that rot? How do you how are you still able to put performances in when? Yeah, someone else is having a bad day, and then that kind of translates to how do you do a KJP in South Africa and pull pull out a Test match, but win basically by yourself? How do you do that? How do you have those moments? Yeah, how do you to create those match winning moments? Which I think is what the from what I see is yeah. what the kind of philosophy around the team is, and then eventually at some point that's all going to come together. And I, I mean, some people will be screaming that's starting to come together in Red Bull cricket for Sri Lanka, or maybe we've seen that kind of come together with the way we batted right. today and the intent that they they mm-hmm. showed. I so sometimes there's a lot of conversation around cricket that I'm like, I wonder, like to a degree, players say, "Yeah, I've got intent," or "I'm I'm not yeah. gonna I'm I'm not gonna." This this is a, ba- a bowl of I'm facing who I don't think I'm going to score runs on, so I'm just going to see yeah. this over out. And actually, and I definitely think if you look at the way Patton bats, I definitely think that he his great skill with Patton and Kamindu is that they they are able to just play every single ball as an individual ball, and that's yeah. where you can see. Sometimes I see an, uh, an over, and I, this definitely happened. I think it was the third over today, or fourth over, I can't remember which one, where the first ball came down, and I was like, that's a really good ball, dot ball. Yeah. Second ball comes down, that's a really good ball, dot ball. And then third it was Modi's ball, over, right? Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. And it was like, bang, bang. And I know, ultimately, he, he was the player that got him um, in the end. But, but it didn't matter. It, by that point, it didn't matter. I, and I think that was infectious on Kusal. Actually... I think Kusal's inning, Kusal Mendes's inning showed like both good Kusal and bad Kusal. So like when he's free and when they say just go attack the bowlers, he gets to that level where you're like, how do you stop this guy? How do you bowl to yeah. this guy? Once the 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 chase became sort of simple and he was just kind of batting around, and which I agree he had to do based off of you know, where they were and what the situation they're in. He's a much more fallible batter, right? So he should know that really he helps the team most when he's just going hell for leather and he's trying to score runs quickly. And I think Potham has brought that to the team. And I think they've batted together so many times now that they understand that between each other, that, hey, we got to take it to the opposition. We play best when we do that. Like, remember the win against the India in the Asia Cup? Right. They just took it to India and said, all right, we're going to do that. Um, And especially chasing those two are so crucial to them getting to any target. I think um, I think one thing about your sort of coherence theory that I'm missing here. Right. Part of what made Owen Morgan's team so great is that they didn't drop guys after one match. 
yeah. right? Chimindu, someone like Chimindu Winkramasinghe would never have been dropped um, after one match. So that's what I see as impeding it. Like sort of the, I think, you know, now you have one, two, four, five. I feel really comfortable. Kusal, Patham, Kamindu, and Charith, right? Like I feel like they all have a game plan. They know how to play and they all played well, right, in this series. I think it's those players that need to figure out their roles, right? It, you just need to tell someone like Chamindu, right, we're going to bat you at six. This is what we expect from you. We expect you to play big shots, score big runs. If you get out playing a big shot, we don't care. That's totally fine. Like, remember Moeen Ali, right? He would play that six role. And how many times would he get out playing a shot and you'd think, oh, my God, that's such a stupid shot to play. But in the end, he'd play these brilliant match-winning innings that turn games around in ways that actually help the team. Um, so that's where I see the problem is, is like, I think we are... the. The, the team under Sanath seems too quick to change their plans when they don't work. Uh, and we should probably talk about the second match and the pitch that was prepared for the second match, because I think that was an example of that. And they did that with India as well, where, hey, I don't think we can beat these guys on a flat pitch. Let's yeah, pull up a right burner. So the only thing I will say is I'm not sure that they didn't back themselves they don't back themselves to win not on a rank turner. And because if if you look at the squad and the team that they picked for the first game, it kind of implies that they weren't expecting it to turn as much as it ultimately did. Yeah. Right. Um I I was trying to put my when that second game was happening and the West Indies were falling apart, right? I was kind of thinking, if I was a groundsman looking after an international ground in Sri Lanka, <coughs> what kind of pitch would I try and prepare? Yeah. And I kind of concluded this is exactly the type of pitch I would try and prepare, because I'd try and prepare a pitch that played to, to my national team strengths as, as much as possible, yeah. right? So I kind of wonder where this is all broken down, right? Because I remember after was it after the 50 over World Cup last year that in part of the kind of post-mortem, I th- I'm, I'm pretty yeah. sure with Sanath had come out and said, he was just like, we need to prepare pitches that are back, more batting friendly. Yeah. Right. Like we also should say, Sri Lanka scored 162 on this pitch. I mean, you, you, your kind of counter argument will be, well, the West Indies didn't have as many spin options. Yeah. They only had Moti basically. Yeah. And, and Akil Hussain, right, number two yeah. bowler in the world, not not here, right? So is it? And you know, someone like Nicholas Baran, who loves batting in places like this, right? Does yeah. it look different? Yeah. The 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 other the kind of other thing I would say is like to to go from you know what I thought the first and third pitches I thought were fair cricket pitches. The second pitch. To me, like the amount it was moving, right, was yeah. turning, was very significant. Um, and I think we just want to stay away. And this this is a concern I voiced to you last week from that short sighted. How do we win the next match, right? Because, and, and the reason I feel so passionately about this is because we have talent in the team. We have a side. When you look from 1 to 11, actually from 1 to 15, that can do something if they're given chances to develop, right? Um, you remember when we went to Australia in the 2022 World Cup, we had this issue with Hasaranga. He just, you know, he was our talisman. We built our bowling attack around him because he dominates in Sri Lankan conditions. Now he's fish out of water. And what's our what's our ploy? What's our plan to take wickets in that, in that case? Um, so I think we need to give the likes of Hasaranga, right? This is a bilateral series, likes of Hasaranga, the likes of Will Olegay, chances to figure out their plans, right? When you're getting smashed around because you're not getting turned, what do you do, right? And thankfully, we have the franchise leagues that give our players those chances, especially on the bowling front. But that's where I see our plans getting into troubles. Yes, we can build a competitive team at home, no doubt. But... To win, to be Sri Lanka cricket that we have come to know and love, right? A world beating side, we've got to take that next step and think in the long term. 
I absolutely 100% agree with you there. Um, Should we have a quick word about the ODI series? Yes. Um, My first kind of top take on it is, particularly after watching the 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 kind of crowd of Dumbler and the way people got behind behind the incredible the, right yeah the T twenty was so I actually think we would have benefited from playing three more T twenties more than we would have been playing three ODIs. Should I complain? And and maybe actually maybe the West Indies wanted to play ODIs for the Champions Trophy or whatever next season. Um, they're not playing in it either, right? Oh, they're they not. Didn't make it up, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, so. Yeah, both teams would have would have pre- uh, preferred to have played T T twenties. I I assume um, because it just feels like a, such a long time away that we're gonna yeah. t- till the next World Cup. Um, but that said, we're going into it with a bit of form, right? Because we beat India, India, yeah. In the last last time we played this format for what kind of for whatever it's worth. Um, I'm kind of looking forward to them because, firstly, I just love watching shrunken cricket. <laughs> yeah. Um, and and secondly, because I just want to see what he does with the team because I think he, of all the three formats at the moment, this is the one where they seem to be the most amount of experimentation around it. Right? There's Van der Sey. They absolutely should be right. Like yeah, they've yeah. got four years to the three years to the World Cup. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Does, does Van der Sey keep his place? Who's going to be in the have we seen the squad? I can't even remember. Like, no, we haven't seen the squad. Um, who are they going to be the seamers? Yeah. How are they going to handle the all-rounder option? I think I think that was one thing we talked about post-World Cup, like how weak they seemed on the ODI all-rounder front. Because more so than T20, right, you can kind of have – if you have main bowlers, you don't really need – but to, you need real all-rounders who can get through – 10 overs, right? You can't play, you can't play five bowlers in the ODI format because that just leaves too long of a tail unless they happen to be able to bat really well. Yeah. I th- Will we see Chambaka? You think we'll see Chambaka make a, a return? I don't know. I think the the impression I get is that I think he's quite far away from international cricket. I mean, I say that, like, who knows? It's Sri Lanka, right? Like, like absolutely. Who knows? Uh, what do we know? What you know? I, I, as I said, I kind of think seniors play quite a big role in, yeah. in this whole thing. So maybe Chandy's stays in the squad. Um, Angelo's back from playing franchise cricket in in Texas. Maybe they might want to put him into it. There's, is Dusson like what's his situation yeah. with it? Um, you know, someone like Benura has been been around. You know, he he's in all the high performance videos in the hot tub having a great time. <laughs> um it feels to me like he's one of those players who is probably working quite hard in the background yeah. and, and potentially deserves a chance. Is 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 ODI cricket gonna be where they, they fit him? Mm-hmm. They've done quite a good job with creating a kind of stable of, of red ball bowlers. Have they been going away? Have they gone right. away somewhere? In the um, they call it the brain center, don't they? And put together a a kind of stable of of yeah of I mean um, o, uh, ODI cricketers, Kasim Raj. I think that's the tough part, right? Be, who who are the seamers, right? Because yeah. do you give Patharana a go, right, and say, okay, if we're thinking twenty twenty seven, we don't have to play him all three games, but give him a game or two to kind of develop. Um, Dilshan Madhushanka, what's his current health status? Right, like no, what, no, no, no one ever, right. No one ever says in the 2023 World Cup. Yeah. Um, oh. What like what what's going on with him? He's he's slowly becoming Shlunker's Joffre Archer, right? It's like we saw yeah. some of him. We got super excited about it. The Australians were were petrified of him, and now he's been taken away. In like we don't yeah. know where he is. He's going to reemerge playing uh, second eleven cr- mercantile cricket, cricket for uh, yeah for yeah. I don't know what club he's he's a part of, but. Um, yeah, and then I, I'd imagine you think Chimindu and and Wella are automatic starters, right? You you'd assume Patham, Avishka, Kusal, Kamindu, um, Charith are automatic starters. Yeah, I'm not saying yeah. he doesn't want to do it, right? I have never talked to him like yeah, 
but at the moment, Kaminsky's playing every single format. <laughs> like, yeah, Kissel, yeah. playing yeah. Every, every single format, and kind of we're kind of hoping he faces every single ball, either as a wicketkeeper or as batting. Like, yeah. so maybe, maybe three years out from the next major tournament in this format, it might be a consideration yeah. to rotate these guys out. I don't know. Um, I kind of, I'm, I'm interested and excited to see this squad and see what they do with it. Because yeah. um, it wasn't that long ago that Dimuth was opening the batting for us. So less than a year ago. Just over a year ago now, right? Because yeah. it was... Yeah, yeah. About exactly a year ago. Yeah. Exactly a year ago. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, you never know. So you never know what's going to happen with it. I heard Melinda Siri Warden might be getting a call up sometime soon. Yeah. Who who knows? Juven Mendes has had a, has a great <laughs> league, league tournament in, um, in <laughs> India. Maybe he's ready for a recall. Um, Tom, should we kind of leave it there? Let's leave it there. And because we've been blathering on for ages, if you've got all the way through and you haven't hit the subscribe, I can't believe what you're doing to me here, guys, and all girls. Um, also, leave your comments, leave your likes. Um, we love hearing from you and tell your friends and family about us. We're the Merlian. Thanks for watching and listening. See you later. Bye. <laughs>